What's going on everybody? This is Kojo Sounds. It's going to be the first part in uh, my Arkham Asylum tutorial video series thing. And to start off I want to explain how to begin timing. So timing starts when you gain control of Batman. The easiest way to tell when you gain control of Batman is to just hold left or right on the directional pad. I just do left. Not the, uh, so, sorry, the analog stick or however you control it. So. Is Commissioner Gordon here? Yes, now, sir. when Batman yes, veers off to the left, down, that's basically you when you start timing. You Easy peasy. All right. So at this point in the uh, intro walk, walkathon, the Joker caravan is gonna stop, and the doctor is gonna check him, and then Joker is gonna say boo, and everybody backs up and points their guns at him. Now, what actually is happening is that Frank is gonna back up as well, but he's he controls basically where the caravan moves. So if you stand behind bowls like this, and then when Joker does his thing, Bowles doesn't actually back up. And you'll see afterwards the uh, the entire caravan is just going to keep moving forward right when Bowles starts walking. He's good. Get the door open right now. Normally, if you let Bulls back up, he'll take, you know, a half, maybe a second, a second and a half, two seconds, to get back up to the caravan, and then it'll move forward. Alright, I want to take a brief moment to explain the combat in this game. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You basically want to do as many ground takedowns as you can. So in this beginning fight, I don't know, they didn't immediately charge you, but you want to just hit everybody like that and then get a ground pound in if you can. And later on you can use combo batterings to accomplish this. You can alternate combo batterying, punch, combo batterying, punch, and then you can actually stun the last guy standing up um, so that he's ready for the next punch very easily. And then you do a ground pound, so punch, stun, and then with the last two guys you definitely want to stun him so that he's still standing because the last hit is always an instant knockout. One little optimization you can do if you're playing the PC version uh, and playing with a controller is when you rip open a vent, if you mash with the spacebar, for whatever reason the game's code is cool, um, and mashing with a spacebar is faster than mashing with a, a controller button. So even if you play with a, like, with a, if you play with a controller on the PC version like I do, or just, you know, obviously if you play with keyboard and mouse, you'll be using spacebar. But if you're playing with a controller, you'll want to use the spacebar to open vents anyways. Okay, so in that room is the flask that you need to scan in order to progress to the next area. Bowles' alcohol flask, because he's a drunk. Um, but right before that is uh, about right there, where the, uh, where the little crosshair line is is a dialogue trigger for um, Batman to start talking. Now you can just run in there and then skip the dialogue and then um, scan the flask like normal. Or what I, um, yeah, there's a small little skip where basically you run along the right edge of the hallway like this and then when you're diagonally across from the door you can dive roll into it. So I'm going to try and do that right now. Okay, I missed it because I didn't dive roll like a scrub. Oracle, I'm at the holding cells. I'm setting up a crime scene. I can follow traces of alcohol from Frank's bourbon in the atmosphere. Oracle. All right, so one thing that's pretty uh, recurring in movement in this game is camera jumping, which is basically jumping over gaps with a slight uh, camera angle to speed up the jump. So what the game does uh, is essentially it, it makes these jumps more cinematic or something by making Batman jump, grab, and climb up. Whereas normally, as, as you'll see, Batman can actually make this uh, make this gap in a single jump. It sort of extends his jump. It's it's a really strange phenomenon. Essentially, you want to run at this with a uh, you know sort of like a camera angle like this, 45 degree angle or a uh, a 90 degree angle like that to one side. It doesn't really matter which side. Um, which is fine. It's pretty easy if you're on keyboard and mouse. If you're playing with a controller, you sort of have to do like this claw grip. Maybe I'll take a picture or something, I don't know. But
but where you need to hold run and control both Batman and the camera. So if you do it sort of like that, you can see Batman, he jumps later, essentially. He sort of runs on the air for a split second, and then he jumps, and you just make it across. All right, coming up is just an example of how I'm going to use the remote batarang in a fight. Uh, sorry, the, not the remote batarang, the combo batarang, which is the first upgrade. So I start off just by punching, and then I sort of alternate between batarang and then punching. It's really simple. The, it's uh, inter uh, important to note that the remote batarang, or combo batarang, actually knocks down guys longer than a... Um, than a regular punch would, basically about twice as long. So you can use that to your advantage, and if you keep track of which guys you actually knock down with a combo batarang, you can really time your fights well. You uh, another thing, if you're playing on controller, uh, just a very, very small um, optimization that you can do, is that the camera speed is actually fa it's af uh, faster when you um, are crouched, or Rather, the camera angle is zoomed out, so it's faster if you crouch. So when you're coming out of this cutscene, for instance, you can actually uh, move your camera up faster if you just hold crouch there. Obviously, this only applies to controller. All right, so coming up is the first predator room in the game, and then followed by the second predator room there. Um, and I didn't spacebar mash there because my spacebar is really loud. But you want to batarang this guy and uh, take, do a ground pound on him. In this game, this is not shared by, um, by the sequels, but in Arkham Asylum, when you throw a batarang and hit a guy and then do a ground pound, it's actually silent. Well, not completely silent, but it's, it doesn't alert guys that aren't right next to the ground, the, where the ground pound takes place. Um, so yeah, basically the guy up on the ledge there won't hear this ground pound. So you go ahead and grapple here, and if you're not holding the uh, the run button, whatever that is for you, um, then Batman won't climb automatically. So you can just hit the grab, tap the grapple button, and he won't climb this automatically. And then you can do a ledge takedown. And then what I do is I wait and do a quick batarang when this guy peeks his head over this ladder. So right now, and then he'll fall. Now what you want to do is come over here, climb and break these teeth, because they can actually mess with your Batarang targeting. And then wait for the cutscene to finish. You can skip this. Uh, the way I do this on hard difficulty is I run straight over here, turn on detective mode, do the same knockoff here. I wait for this guy to jump down, throw a Batarang, punch this guy down, and then it's just a matter of ground pounds and taking guys out. I'll do a running kick on this guy. And then after that, what you're going to want to do is run up right in front of Bulls here, because the cutscene will only trigger when you are next to Bulls here. Alright, coming up is the Jack Ryder skin. It's pretty important uh, and hard to have a lot, of, a lot of experience, as much as you can, really. And there's a, a brittle scan coming up where the radio on the bench um, is uh, Jack Ryder's radio, and it's a riddle, uh, that radio. Now you can stop and look at it and scan it, um, but you can actually do it also while you're running, and again, this is probably going to be easier um, on keyboard mouse where you can control the camera easily, um, but if you're sort of running and you want to run past and sort of track Jack, uh, track the radio sort of in the center of your camera, it's not really specific, um, but it's not like that. Actually, you want to have it closer to the edge of your uh, screen, I found, when you hit the button, so like that. Um, there's a delay between when you hold down the button and when you actually scan, so I'll tell you when I'm holding the button. I hold it now, and that's too early. You want to have it closer to the edge of the screen. Now. There it is. Another uh, method to do this... Um, is, is is if you're running and you're not comfortable yet with uh, and you're using controller and you're not comfortable with controlling the the camera with that claw grip you can actually just use the auto aim of the camera and then whoops I haven't done this in a long time so uh, forgive me 
if I take a few tries to do this, you can just use the, the camera to do the scan, sort of like that. But once you get comfortable with uh, con controlling the camera like this, if you're using a controller, it's more consistent, I found, to, uh, to do it yourself, even though I can't seem to do it right now very well. All right, uh, another little skip. I don't know. It's not. It's really low effort. You don't do much. Uh, essentially, after you get the explosive gel from the um, Batmobile here, Harley trashed the car. Batman explains that you need to scan the crime scene for a thing, and it ends up being Gordon's pipe. And then you follow his tobacco all the way to the uh, medical facility, which is really cool that tobacco lasts that long on the floor. Um, but you can just not do that and just go all the way to the medical facility, to the roof of the medical facility. You just, you, you don't need to waste your time scanning it. Alrighty, coming up is the second bread room in the game. It's the bread room in the medical facility. So after a bit of net vent navigation. Um, you should have twin batterings by this time, um, which I do. So what I do is I put a explosive gel on this wall and I switch to detective mode. I get over to the far gargoyle on this wall and once this guy, that guy, rounds the corner like that, I throw, it, this kind of happens fast, I detonate the explosive gel, I switch to twin batarangs and then I throw twin batarangs at these two guys so that they get knocked down. And then it's just a matter of knocking down these guys, grappling up here. Throwing a battering at this guy. Oh, except he missed. I don't know. If that happens, just punch him. So after freeing the three doctors, you can skip this cutscene. Uh, you don't actually have to take out these two guys. Or three guys, actually. There are three. You can actually just glide straight into the elevator right behind them. And hit the teeth if you want, or miss them. But yeah, you don't even have to bother with them at all. Alright, I figured I'd go through the entire Scarecrow 1 sequence. sequence um, Scarecrow 1 on hard. Scarecrow just moves very quickly. You start running immediately. You can start running. And then if you get down here fast enough, you can crouch, hide behind this wall, and then keep running. And there you go. Um, now, you can do the regular thing, which is to climb up here, shimmy over, and then climb. But if you walk sort of right at the edge here and then climb up not not there you have to be sort of coming at it from an angle oh, let me wait for a scarecrow you kind of have to do it as you're moving I, here, I just need to wait for him you can actually climb up the entire the the thing very quickly I'm not doing very well that should have been it I'm not sure it's You're being really finicky life. right now. Everything is as real as I choose it to be. There we go. So I guess you want to be sort of right here. Oh. Not there. You wanna be sort of right here, and then you can run and do it. So once you do that, hide behind this wall. Um and one thing you can do is this is sort of a trick is if you wedge yourself it's really hard to do um, you, you have to wedge yourself sort of between this explosive wall and this pillar here it's really hard to do with keyboard and mouse um, and you can actually stand behind this thing and Scarecrow won't notice you and then you can just continue along and finish the episode Alright, so for Bane fight, um, there's a little bit of manipulation you can do. You want to be standing not close enough to Bane so that he'll swat at you, but not too far away. Um, in order to get him to charge. Charging is what you really want to go for, ideally. So, he'll charge right off the bat every time. So you throw a batarang as close... You want to be as him to be as close as he can to you, because you know it slows down the game. But then you want to be sort of at this distance, and then slowly walk, and you can see you get him to charge. 
And you sort of just gotta get a feel for how to do this. Just kind of walk slowly. Sometimes he doesn't like that. But if you just keep at it, he'll charge right after he taunts you like that. Now ideally, after this first phase, you want to go for a two charge Bane um, on the other phases. You can get him in just two charges. So the best way to do that is to punch him for a bit and then roll away after you, he does that. And then after he hits the wall here, you can just punch him maybe once if you're feeling risky. And then... Also, you can charge up, uh, because combo batarangs do more damage to Bane. You can do you can do that, or you can just counter these guys. But you can see now we're at a two charge. Only two charges required for that phase. For this one, it's kind of harder to just punch him, because since those guys sometimes attack you, they didn't that time. And one thing, uh, if he turns away from you, hopefully he'll, he'll do it so I can show it, but if he turns away from you and walks towards a wall, he will, um, no, I guess he's not going to do it. He's going to remodel, basically. <laughs> he, he rips a huge chunk of the wall away. So that was, yeah, he didn't do it there. But if he turns away from you, and you, you can actually run up to him and have him and cancel that because that's a really irritating attack that takes a lot of time. Maybe I'll, I'll put a clip in of it right now of uh, me avoiding that. But, yeah. Alright, so coming up is probably the biggest and most difficult skip in the game. Uh, and it's termed the bell skip, because essentially, normally what you're supposed to do is go through the entire mansion and do a bunch of things, and then Scarecrow too, and then you end up at the top of this uh, bell tower with the bell here, but you can actually um, you can actually cut the bell from down here. There's two uh, different two different gaps. Uh, there's one on the left and one on the right. I'm going to show you how to do the one on the left. It's slightly more difficult. You have less time with the remote batarang in the air once you get through the gap. Um, but it's faster. <laughs> That's the main reason I do it. Um, I'll put a link, an annotation here, for a tutorial um, on how to use the right gap, which may or may not be easier. So, positioning here on this vent is important. Uh, so I stand basically as far in this corner as I can. And I first start off with a regular battering. So what you want to do is sort of aim for this gap. Uh, it's kind of easier to see in detective vision. You aim for this gap so that your battering can get through it like that. And if we uh, hit the, uh, the action camera button to follow it, you'll see this battering goes all the way through this. Now what you basically want to do is switch to not uh, multi but remote battering and actually I, I nudged the stick so I think it messed up my aim. That should be good. Switch to remote control battering and what you're gonna do is throw it through the gap and as soon as it goes through this gap um, your camera's not gonna automatically readjust for a few for like maybe a quarter of a second and you want to what I, the way I control it is I take it straight um, down left um, with both sticks, with both left and right stick. So let's see if I can do it. And you want to aim for the very, that was very good, you want to aim for the very center of that rope there. Um, there's a few dead spots in the rope where the remote battering won't, will just go straight through the bell and will not cut it, and in that case you can't turn it around in time. You're unfortunately just gonna have to try again. And sadly, uh, remote, batter uh, remote batterings do take a few seconds to recharge, so if you miss the first throw, you will have to try it 
again. But even if you take, you know, like 9 or 10 tries to do it, it's still going to be much faster than actually doing all of that story content. Alright, right past the door from Bellskip is uh, a little tutorial with this, uh, the first Stunrod guy in the game. Um, it does a little zoom in on him and shows that, you know, he's like a Stunrod guy and he's bad. Um, however, if when you, right when you get past this little uh, archway opening here, if you point your left stick um, to the top left, you know, where he is, and hit R2 twice, or uh, right trigger, or whatever your, um, I think it's crouch, or actually on keyboard, I think it's a separate button for quickfire uh, back claw. Anyways, you want to do the quickfire back claw, like that. Um, and you can pull him pretty much right as you get through this gate. You want to do that, and you can actually skip the cutscene. So like right now. And you can see the, the camera, I didn't control the camera there at all. The camera automatically um, switched, like sort of tried to look at him, but he pulled down too, f he was pulled down too fast. Alright, so this is Zaz. There's a couple ways you can do Zaz, depending on how much you like remote control batarangs. I don't, so I don't use remote control batarangs at all. Instead, I come over to this corner here. Throw a batarang, and you can wait until he peeps his head out, or you can aim straight for his elbow right there, and the angle will actually um, hit his arm. And if you hit Zaz anywhere, he will be knocked unconscious. Hey, where you are, Batman? Listen to me carefully. This is with the remote control batarang. So that's with the remote control battering. Alright, so after freeing Warden Sharp, uh, all the crazies are escaped, including Poison Ivy. Uh, she's gone. But one of the crazies is going to be at the end of this hall. Now, um, you can take him out like normal, but you save a few seconds if you do a running attack. Basically, if you time it um, right, you can do a running attack and hit him and have the door start opening while you take out the guy. And the way you want to time it is you want to be running at him, and as soon as he jumps and then his feet touch the ground, as soon as his feet touch the ground, you want to do a running kick at him. And if you do it correctly, the, uh, as soon as you come into contact with him, then the camera will start uh, and the door will start act being active. It's, it's pretty easy once you get the timing down like that. You can see the camera immediately activates. Alright, right through these doors, uh, this is the first starting area of the Botanical Gardens, right through these doors is the uh, Botanical Gardens Predator Room. Uh, it's a really interesting Predator Room in that you have to go through it three times, and all three times you can actually skip doing it. Now the trick is you have to not be spotted um, by any of the, the thugs. Um, however, you can throw batterings to knock them down as long as you're out of the door by the time they get up. Um, so basically, we're going to make a beeline straight for the door on the right. Um, and we're going to go up the stairs, and right when we get to the top of the stairs, you want to throw a batarang, throw a quickfire batarang at the guy. If you try and sneak past him, um, you won't be able to. He will see you. On easy, I believe he will not see you, but on hard, he will. So basically, you want to run up. Once you get to about right here, throw a batarang, and then run to the door. Now, I should show you an alternate method. If you're not comfortable with doing that, if you just restart from checkpoint the second you get in to the door, and then just run straight forward. You will be able to sneak past him because the timing for the room changes. Um, so if you instantly checkpoint restart and if you're playing on PC where you have really fast checkpoint restarts, that may um, be a better option for you rather than going for the quick batarang. All right, so after the fight and saving the hostage back there, going back into the predator room, this skip is actually much, much simpler. All you have to do is crouch, get up, about next to this guy, until you can grapple onto this gargoyle. You'll grapple right in front of his face, come right over here, and you can just fly straight to the door. 
and because the power is already off, you can progress right here. All right, so this is the predator room with all the hostages in uh, the big cages. There's a couple ways you can do this. Um, there's the risky way and the less risky way. Uh, I'm going to show you the risky way first, and then the less risky way. So basically, the way this works is that uh, all the guys are they have alarms on them, and it, so when you take them out and they sound the alarm, um, then the operator kills all hostages. However, there's a pretty big delay in between when this happens. So if you're fast enough, you can take out three of the goons before uh, um, before the operator. I'm sorry, three including the operator, and then uh, to just take out the last guy, or you can run right past the, the second guy if you're feeling too short on time. So I'll show you the risky way first. The more risky way, I should say. Get me out of this. Joker's men are all wearing the security colors. I'll need to so you get up to this guy, order. knock him out, stop in front of this railing, hop down here, get up to this guy, throw him, knock him down. And then Joker's gonna start talking, you know, kill the hostages. But you can just come up here, punch this guy, because he's considered in his own little zone here. And then you can pull this guy down, and that's the predator room. Alright, now I'm going to show you the less risky way. Which basically is the same thing, you just don't take out that second guy. You just do that, basically. And then you can throw a battering at this guy. Have him knocked down, if you're lucky. And then knock him again. Here's a very small little time saver. Um, that you can do right after the dual titan fight when Batman Sands says I need to get uh, something to get over this ravine um, if you wait about a second and then jump into the pit and then um, sort of mash the grapple button and grapple back up you can skip the little animation where he um, punches his wrist it's about now just after he says ravine just wait about a second and now you can hear the uh, the bat wing coming in. All right, so after leaving the double titan fight and the predator room, uh, not sorry, yeah, the predator room with the cages, uh, the game expects you to go across and talk to Ivy. However, you can skip this and just keep going in the direction that you need to go, just by coming in this door, waiting until you see the save indicator in the bottom right, do a checkpoint restart. And there it is. Now the, uh, it updates your current objective to advance to the next area. Alright, after crossing the electrified floor with the line launcher, um, the third and final time you come into the predator room, you can again skip it. There are a couple ways you can do this. Um, the way I do it is the way that works for me. It's the easiest. Um, essentially, you grapple straight up to the gargoyle right above you, so you pan up, look at that, grapple to it, you throw a batarang at the guy that's right underneath you, sort of looking down on, at the entire room, and then you have to do a glide, and you need to glide, uh, basically you, you just do a single glide all the way to the door on the far end of the room, and you want to glide over the guy's head so they don't see you, but low enough so that you don't you know, hit the ceiling, so you'll see what I'm talking about. Can up, throw a batarang, and so you glide so you don't hit that overpass, but you glide above their heads like that. And that's the third and final predator room skip, leaving all those guys alive. Also, while I'm here, I can show you just the very, uh, you know, the best way to get through this stuff here. You can actually just line launch right over this. Alright, 
So after coming onto the Botanical Gardens, to contain um, the game the expects you to, last year. to go to the mansion and talk to Cash and do some other stuff, and then there's these guys that spawn that shoot you with sniper rifles, and it's really irritating. Um, but you can actually just progress to where uh, Killer Croc is. You don't even have to talk to Cash at all, and there's no sniper here. So you just come over to uh, intensive treatment here, and you line launch over, and you just proceed inside. So the people in chat are telling me not to uh, keep starting these clips off with our right, so I'm going to say something else. So the upcoming predator room, you can line launch through this by the way, the upcoming predator room is skipped. You're going to want a cryptographic range, as well as power, it speeds things up. You can go ahead and skip this, you're going to want to kick this vent down, and you can use space arm mashing if you're on PC. And you want to sort of edge, get to the edge of this vent and glide kick this guy. Now once you hit him, I sort of need to explain what's going to happen. Everybody's come, going to come to this location, and there's one guy on the very lowest floor um, that's going to run over to the ladder. And you want him to be right underneath the ladder when you perform the next line launch, which is going to sort of go over his head. You'll see what I'm talking about. So hop down. This guy's going to come up the ladder. Um, sometimes he goes that way, but you can actually... If he does decide to go the other, in the other direction, um, you wait until he's basically walking towards the ladder. Then you hack this thing so that you're standing um, behind this, this wall here, so you can't be seen by thugs that are patrolling inside that room. And then you can just hack the thing, grapple up. Oh, don't do that. You can just drop down right here. Oh, excuse me. And it just complete the predator room without actually completing the predator room. Now on to Scarecrow. So during the Killer Croc final running sequence, well, when you're running at the camera, there's actually a weird trick that you can do in order to get Croc to um, sort of instantly pop up at the very end uh, uh, edge of the water and it is to have the auto proximity detonation upgrade so you can choose to get this upgrade and you'll save I don't know approximately I guess it's like 10 seconds maybe 10 to 15 seconds just by buying this upgrade um, the disadvantages is that you can't use the explosive gel very effectively during the elevator titan fight and um, that's one less upgrade that you can use for health upgrades to refill your health during the later fights. Um, but I'll I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like. So Krog instantly popped out of the water there, My caves will be your and he's going to come all the way down here. I'm going to sh show you now what it looks like if you don't have the upgrade. At the beginning of this sort of platformy glidey section, um, there's this really long glide. You can go all the way down there, but it's, it's actually possible to make it to this ledge. Now, in this game, if you're standing still at a jump and then you, ju uh, you have Batman run off, he'll actually do a jump and then glide. This actually loses a little bit of altitude and it makes this glide much, much more difficult. So what you actually want to do is get a running start and you want to run off the very tip edge of this 
thing here. And then you can go ahead and just glide straight at the ledge here. It's, it's dead simple to do, and then Batman will just climb it. And then you can continue with this platforming section as normal. Actually, you'd want to glide uh, or grapple to the... You can grapple straight to the top from the bottom, but you can do that. So in the two pump rooms, it's very easy to skip the first one with the fighting guys. It's more difficult to skip the predator room one, and I'll show you how to do that and explain it first. Uh, all you need is the range upgrade for this one. There's two boxes you're going to need to hack. So you just stand up here, hack the first one, wait for Oracle to call, skip it, hack the second one, and you don't want to be too close to the edge here, otherwise there's a guy with a gun who will actually kill you. Go ahead and skip the second one, or hack the second one, and then you can leave. And that's the first pump room. Okay, this is the door to the Predator pump room. Uh, it's a bit more complex, slightly trickier. Um, essentially what you're going to want to do to begin with is you're going to grapple up to a gargoyle. There's going to be a guy at the window and you want to wait for him to turn around, then you can glide to the stairs and use your long-range hacking to uh, hack the pump room box, and then you can grapple on out. And all this will make sense uh, as you see it happen. So there's this guy. Uh, you can just crouch behind him, grapple right past him. He won't see you. This guy at the window here, you just need to wait for him to turn around. Glide over to these stairs. Now, you don't want to be to the point when you're inside of this room, otherwise he'll turn around and see you before you even have a chance to hack this thing. So you want to be on the stairs while you hack it, and then also you need to, you know, sort of hack it fast. That's where the, uh, the power upgrade really comes in handy. So a good way to do this is to be standing along this right edge rail here, and sort of pull out your cryptographic sequencer, aim at the thing, and then walk backwards and just mash the um, the use button. So come up here, sort of walk backwards, and you have to do a couple passes sometimes. This may be too close into the room. I guess not, actually, since I'm not dead. So then you just hack it really fast, crouch, get out. When you hit the floor, Oracle will call you, or you'll call her, and you can get out of the pump room. And that is it in terms of long skips. All you have left now is the Titan Elevator fight, which is pretty straightforward. Um, then you have the Ivy boss fight, which again is pretty straightforward. You just Pretty much throw batarangs at her and don't die. And then the double titan fight, and then Joker. So, yeah, this is the end of the tutorial, really. Thanks for watching, and good luck.